Now, recently, President Trump tweeted out something strange. Okay, well, let's go and, I guess, put some context to that. Uh, it's strange compared to what he normally tweets about, which is, no collusion, rigged witch hunt, D Michael Cohen, terrible person, don't retain his services. No, it's a little bit different than that. Uh, actually, he tweeted about a foreign country. Oh, no. Oh, no. He tweeted that he asked Secretary of State Mike Pompeo to, quote, closely study the South Africa land and farm seizures, seizures and expropriations on a large scale and the large scale killing of farmers. He says, South African government is now seizing land from white farmers. Oh, my God. That sounds terrible. Uh, look, if they're coming in and they're, and they're seizing land and they're killing farmers, well, then obviously we need to look into that, right? Because look, that, that is a problem. That would be a big problem. But it turns out it's not an actual problem. Let me give you the details here. Uh, but first, before I get into that, I do want to let you know how he came by this information. It turns out uh, this was inspired by Fox News host Tucker Carlson. Uh, now, on his show Wednesday evening, Carlson had criticized the State Department for not weighing in on South African President Cyril Ramaphosa's proposed land reforms. Now, the proposed land reforms, of course, uh, I'll get into the details on that, of course. Uh, but first, here we have the President of the United States saying, let's look into South Africa. Well, that's going to cause a stir on Twitter, and of course it did. In fact, uh, here you had the government of South Africa on Twitter saying South Africa totally rejects this narrow perception, which only seeks to provide to divide our nation and reminds us of our colonial past. Hmm. Another South African presidential spokesperson called the tweet unfortunate and misinformed. So now what is the truth? What, what are the actual details of what's going on here? What is going on in South Africa? Are white farmers being stripped of their land and murdered? As Tucker Carlson and Donald Trump seem to suggest. Well, okay. So here's some context, right? So South Africa used to be an apartheid state where you had a small white minority that ruled over the entire country. And unsurprisingly, when you're uh, in that position, you're likely to make laws more favorable to your minority. So one way the government did that was back in 1913 with the Native Land, Natives Land Act. This act actually banned Africans from acquiring agricultural land beyond a few reserves that made up roughly a tenth of the land. So here you had the white minority owning a majority of African land. And you had most Africans that were banned from being able to own that land. Now, of course, that's changed. South Africa is no longer an apartheid state. Uh, there's a majority black government. Okay. But the legacy of that does remain. Black South Africans who make up 80% of the population own just 4% of the country's farms and agricultural holdings, according to government data published earlier this year. So that's a pretty, pretty big disparity, right? So there's a government in power. Uh, that is looking to change that. They want to do land redistribution. Now, look, um, I, I'm encur I would like to encourage more black land ownership. Of course, that's great. Uh, and look, they already had a plan in which they would go and they would basically negotiate and they would sell uh, if these white landowners, these white farm owners, decide we would like to sell our land you would get a fair market value. I think that's great. I think even the other plan, which they had also passed, uh, where they would bring in arbitrators uh, to, dis uh, to discuss what a fair price would be into these negotiations, also not a bad plan. The whole point is to basically solve that disparity. Now, another solution, uh, which has not gone into effect, but what's being talked about um, is allowing the government to seize land sometimes without compensation. Now, uh, I don't think that's a good solution. I don't agree with that at all. Uh, I think they should continue allowing white farmers if they choose to sell their land at market value. I think that's the way to go. I think that's the most fair. I understand too 
that there is a consideration here that white farmers, those white farmers did not give black people the same opportunity. I understand that they came in and they straight up stole the land. I totally get it, right? And I totally understand the frustration by some in the South African government at white people still owning that majority of land and having that redistribution not come fast enough. Totally get it. Totally get it. I completely understand. But I think that if you do these seizures, it's going to end up creating more problems in the future. Um, the whole point here is to have a more equitable redistribution. So now, of course... Um, what's the reaction to this insanity now, uh, let me go to that here now. Um, it, you know, before I do that, actually, uh, let's go to more information so I can give you more context into this, right? So now NPR has reported that president Cyril Ramaphosa is urging the country's constitution to be amended, to make it clear that the government has the right to expropriate land. However, the South African government is not currently seizing land from white farmers. They just want the ability to do so if they choose. Again, I'm not in favor of that. That actually sounds more like, um, and now I can't think of the phrase, but think about when uh, the government can come in and, and take native land, for example, here in America, so they can build a pipeline on it. Well, I don't agree with that either. So I don't agree with any of that. I think everybody who has their land uh, and chooses to sell their land gets a fair price. But again, that's just, uh, that's my opinion on that. Uh, and, and of course, you can disagree. Now, <clears throat> South Africa, of course, the government uh, says, uh, we still have a festering wound in terms of how the land was taken from our people and that wound needs to be healed. And the only way to heal that wound is to give land to the people. Doing so will ensure a fair and prosperous future for all of our people. We, I agree. I, I think I think that we should have a fair and prosperous future. So I think uh, maybe something else is maybe have the government help fund black farmers. That might be another way. Um, so, but anyway, uh, this has caused an enormous stir uh, on white supremacist Twitter, right? Now, white supremacist Twitter immediately said, oh, my God, here we go. And not just Twitter, but websites. You had uh, websites like Stormfront, etc. cetera, uh, going and saying, they're stealing land from the white farmers. Not only that, but they're murdering the white farmers. In fact, um, the, the statement on that, according to NPR, uh, they say that it's misleading and at worst has been condemned as a common white supremacist talking point. So let's look at that, right? Uh, now, farms across the country, uh, country have indeed seen a significant number of killings recently. But according to one of South Africa's largest farmers organizations, Agra SA, the number of killings per year has declined to less than a third of the number recorded two decades ago, back in 1994. Now, they said uh, the BBC concluded after diving into decades of data, the uh, they said that you should not draw any sort of conclusions from this at all. So basically they're saying there's no actual like coordinated government led or government inspired effort to attack and kill white farmers. Nonetheless, Anton Harbour, who teaches journalism in Johannesburg, tells NPR's Michelle Kelman that a group named Afro Forum has strongly promoted the claim that white farmers are particularly threatened by this violence. They've gained supporters among politicians in places as far flung as Australia. They've sent a delegation to speak with Tucker Carlson, and on Thursday, they welcomed Trump's tweet. Uh, Harbour said, quote, They are quite vocal, and they present themselves as a group that protects minority rights, but they are largely seen as a group that protects white Africans rights. Hmm. And according to the Anti-Defamation League, that group is basically promoting white supremacist talking points. They're not protecting minorities. They're saying, no, no, no. Uh, we, we're going to spread white supremacist talking points. 
and present a side that's not actually true. Again, they're not stealing lands and there's no coordinated effort to murder white farmers. And we'll have more uh, numbers on that later as well. Uh, but first... The ADL says it is extremely disturbing that the president of the United States echoed a long-standing and false white supremacist claim that South Africa's white farmers are targets of large-scale, racially motivated killing by South Africa's black majority. We would hope that the president would try to understand the facts and realities of the situation in South Africa, that the, rather than repeat disturbing, racially divisive talking points used most frequently by white supremacists. I kind of laughed in the middle of that because the we would hope that the president would understand facts and realities. No, this is an administration that admits to using alternative facts. No, and he has a history of retweeting right supremac uh, white supremacists and ultra right wing talking points. He is a white supremacist. He is a racist. Now. The Southern Poverty Law Center also weighed in, uh, and they identified this claim as a lodestar for white supremacist groups at home and abroad. And the organization named another notable figure to cite the concept of white genocide. You know who that was? I mean, look, it's not just Richard Spencer. It's not just Mike Cernovich. They're all repeating this claim. You also had Dylan Roof. Now, uh, Trump's tweet last night about South African farmers, a complicated situation that racist propagandists redu reduced to a canary in the coal mine scenario for white people, is one of the most startling examples of this president indulging in racist thinking. That's what the Southern Poverty Law Center said about this. But here's the thing, this idea about white genocide, which is not happening in South Africa, as the numbers are at a 30-year low, for killings on farms, as I said before, this was started on Stormfront, which made its way around the other white supremacist sites, 4chan, 8chan, The Blaze, Daily Wire, Fox News, and then gets immediately piped to the president, which of course had economic impacts on South Africa. In fact, their currency ended up falling and their stocks ended up falling due to this tweet. Now, look, uh, the president uh, of South uh, Africa, he is a billionaire. He's a billionaire capitalist, right? So he's a big business guy. I don't think he's going to do um, land seizures. That's not going to be good for business. Uh, but he is fighting back against this, as I mentioned before. Uh, but look, if there were an actual white genocide going on, don't you think that we'd be pissed off about it? Don't you think we'd be outraged? Everybody should be outraged if that happens. In fact, any genocide should be met with outrage. Now, do you see Fox News talking about, and, and again, let's talk about real genocide, right? Well, there was the Rohingya people in Myanmar. Did, did Tucker Carlson talk about that? Did, uh, I, did the president tweet about that? Did anybody talk about that? No, they didn't. They don't care about actual real genocide. What they care about is imagined fake genocide against white people. Look, there's no epidemic of state-sanctioned murder of white people. Or not even state-sanctioned murder of white people. Look, you have, uh, according to Agra, uh, Agra SA... There's actually no reliable data to support a claim that farmers are more likely to be murdered than other South African citizens, and it includes white farmers. <laughs> so there's no white genocide. It, it's simply not true. They are looking at a seizing land, and, and I don't agree with that position. I, I hope they don't go in that direction um, because it would be the same thing to me as eminent donate, domain. And I'm absolutely against things like eminent domain. I understand the need for redistribution of land uh, so that black Africans uh, in South Africa can can actually get on parity again uh, and and get over the you know effects and uh, of colonialism in an, uh, in a good positive economic way. 
that they can recover from those past wounds. Look, you know, here's the thing, right? It, it, not exactly the most simple issue, but here you have the basically the effects of colonialism right in the middle of this. And that is a factor that should absolutely be talked about. Now, are they talking about that? No. You don't see the white supremacists talking about that at all. Look, what I'm trying to say, though, is we should not rely on the Donald Trump's, the Fox News, the Tucker Carlson's, the Richard Spencer's, and all of that to tell you what's going on because they will always mislead you 100% of the time in order to put forward their agenda of hate. Don't fall for it. Read the facts. Decide for yourself. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.